Hello everybody, just want to share this message uh, that God put on my heart. I'm writing this sermon, I'm just going to give a little rough draft of it real quick. Let's see, see how it comes out, right? But it's God's given, God given, so it's going to be powerful, I believe, right? And it's called God's positioning, right? God positions us, and, and when he speaks, things happen. That his name, Yarhe Vahe, is... Uh, who is, who was, and yet to come, and the Son Yeshua, right? God Jesus, right? Who is, who was, and yet to come to save His people. It's a, it's a, it's a sentence of a verb, right? It's an action. So God's name is not a noun; it's an action. It's a verb. When He says things, it happens, right? We call Him Jehovah Jireh, right? When the Lord provides. It's an action. He's providing. He gives us peace, shalom. The Lord shalom, right? It's an action. He's given us something. He gave His only begotten Son. He is an action. Right? His love is action. All right. So we're gonna get right here. Micah. Micah is a prophet, which means his name is who is like the Lord. Who is like the Lord? Because we're supposed to imitate the Lord. We're supposed to imitate the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. God gave us the Lord. Gave us the Messiah. He gave us the Savior, and we're supposed to imitate Him. We're supposed to walk in His image. We get covered by the by the sun, right? In Romans, it says that uh, for though he predestined those for those he knew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach. He is the image of God, and to be able to walk in God's image, you must have the Son, right? And to be right with the Father, right? So, who is like the Lord, Micah, 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 Micah? Excuse me, M I C A H, <laughs> Micah, Micah, right? So he speaks through, God speaks through the people, right? He speaks through people. So Micah, Micah 5.2, the coming of the Messiah. But you, Bethlehem, though you were like, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from old and from everlasting. So he's telling them that he's going to be born out of Bethlehem. So we're going to get to Matthew, the Apostle Matthew. Matthew 2, it says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, the day of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born of the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with them. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So now they're going into the prophecies. The scribes and the and the, uh, the priests are like, where is he supposed to be born? Right? So they go into Micah, right? To his writings. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is written by the prophet Micah. Right? But if but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So they're they're telling them, Micah said this, right? Micah the prophet from God. So God spoke to him. So it was well known by the scribes and the priests. That's why the king said, get the scribes and the priests, interpret this. And they said, Micah said this was, he was being born at the Bethlehem, out of Bethlehem. Right? So Matthew the apostle is writing, the apostle, gospel apostle is writing to the Jews. He's specifically writing to the Jews. So they, he's telling them he is who he is. He is a Jew. He is born out of the bloodline of David. He is in the royal lineage through Joseph. If you read, that's what he's by Joseph, the one who raised him. Ain't his blood father, but he was married to his Mary. Mary was brothel to Mary, right? Who gave birth to him, who through Nathan and David, his son, David's son Nathan, and through Mary is the bloodline. And through David and Solomon, through Joseph who raised him, married brothel to Mary. What we say, we say Mary, but brothel to Mary, what they say brings them together so therefore he's the first heir firstborn the heir to the king david uh throne another prophecy fulfilled by our lord jesus christ so when you really think about what's happening matthew is saying he is who he is he's born in bethlehem the prophet said and king herod he even got the the chief priests and the scribes to read up on the prophet micah and it's said and therefore it happened and he is him because he was born in Bethlehem. 
right? So he went from the first chapter saying that the lineage to the royal throne of King David, one prophecy, and that he was in Bethlehem. So he's showing them, Matthew's showing them. Everything points to our Lord Jesus Christ. So we get to Luke. Luke is describing the circumstances behind how he was born in Bethlehem, right? Luke chapter 2, Christ born of Mary. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius, I don't know how to say his name, was governing, governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone in his own town, or his own city. Right now, Luke is telling us the date, the date and when this happened. So you could go back and look. Caesar Augustus, when he was Caesar, Caesar Augustus was the emperor of Rome. And this guy, Quirinius, was governor of Syria. What does that mean? Well, you look in history, you'll find it, and you'll know what time he did this census, this registry, right? And uh, Augustus, was. this was taxation. To be able to tax everybody, he had to have them register under a census, right? We still do that to this day, right? I'm just saying, right? So Joseph has to take his wife, right, Mary, to his own town which is Bethlehem so they went from watch here we go Joseph went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth where they say Jesus of Nazareth right but he was born in Bethlehem right right here we go into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem what was he the bloodline of David called Bethlehem because he was of the house of the lineage of David right see how they're tying it all in he's a Jew he's the king of the Jew he's the bloodline of David he's the royal heir he's the bloodline and the Royal lineage to the throne of King David in every way. So be registered to be registered with Mary. He brought his brothel wife who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth the firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and behold an angel of the lord stood before them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid then the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people for there is a born to you this day in the city of david a savior a savior excuse me who is the christ lord and this will be the sign to you Find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was it with an angel, smote to the heaven host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, then the angel had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph, the babe laying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and, and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying the and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. So as you see, what's happening is how <clears throat> through Micah, God spoke. God spoke. And when he spoke, it said things in action, sent things in motion. Thousands of years or hundreds of years later, excuse me. And Matthew is pointing it out that it happened. And Luke is explaining the circumstances of how it happened. But he's showing you dates. He's showing you uh, times where you can look at the dates by the people that were in power and the census, right? But there's more deeper understanding to this, right? It's it's about it's about how God used the pagan uh, emperor to maneuver Christ into position, and this is why I call this God's positioning. How He maneuvers us in this world to in a position to do His will, and we don't even understand it because Joseph and Mary they didn't understand it. That's why the angel told the shepherds to speak this to her, to confirm, to remind her what her calling, her calling is, is to, to be the mother, the Messiah right there, right? And to give birth in that, who he is, to confirm who he is, right? But God spoke something to existence through a prophet and Matthew's pointed it out to the Jews and Luke is telling everybody the circumstances. 
and how God speaks and God moves and he puts us in these positions and we don't understand it. We don't understand how God moves a lot of times and we're not we're not we're not meant to know everything. Right? Let me tell you when God told when God showed Joseph in the book in the book of Genesis, Joseph, he showed him his sons, his brothers could be bowing down to him, but he never showed him the middle part, how it was gonna get to that point. Right? He shows us the end at the beginning because he's the alpha and the mega, right? He's is and was is yet to come. He's in the past, in the present, in the future. So he shows us the end in the in the beginning. But he never really shows us what's happening in between because we wouldn't want to take the ride. We wouldn't want to do it. Some of us, by, by the, by the uh, turmoil and the hardship that's going to come along with it, that's going to mold us to be men and women of God. So have faith that God is maneuvering you. He's positioning you. And it's because you don't like it where you're at right now. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus in the book, in the Philippians 3, 7 through 11. Paul says to he counts all these things all his knowledge everything who he thought he was as rubbish and to share uh, to be one with Christ at this fellowship with him and his suffering right so wherever you're at if you're in the slums if you're if you're in a dark place man that's when we get with God and remember that Jesus was born in a manger wasn't born in the end. God could have maneuvered and put him in the end. He could have made him a, you know, in a kingdom in a, in a, as a king, but he didn't. So there's no excuse for us to be waddling in our own misery. Like, why don't I have this? Why don't I? Well, let me tell you, God didn't show favoritism over his son. He was born as a peasant in a manger. So we fellowship and hardship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is how we know God. And don't believe this gospel stuff like... Uh, that means don't believe the the prosperity gospel the prosperity gospel like everything's gonna be all right and god wants you to be rich rich and all that like that's not what that's not that's not why why didn't jesus why wasn't he rich why wasn't he born in the main why, why is he born in a manger and not in the end believe the gospel don't believe and have faith in the prosperity gospel Right? The gospel is that, God, that Jesus was sent, that bad people, sinful people could be alive, right? Give us life, right? To save us f from this world, not in this world, right? That there's another promise, a better covenant, right? And that we will have an eternal life and a glorified body will be resurrected and it'll be different the next time. Doesn't guarantee us greatness and prosperity this time. Right. So really think about God's positioning in your life. He's positioning you for a reason. Wherever you're at, have faith and, and praise God. Right? Wherever you're at. You got money? Praise God. If you don't have money, praise God. Because whatever you're at, God has put you there for a reason. Just because you don't know it, just because you don't understand it, don't mean God ain't positioning you to do something for Him. Focus on what God has called you to do. Focus on His will, not your will. And when we sit there and we, we get mad or we don't have money or we're in a bad position, we're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about our own will. But it's not our will. It's Thy will be done. Amen? Amen.